again everybody and welcome back to Fujits Blitz and today we're going to look at the Panther 2, the German Tier 8 medium tank. This is a Patreon uh, requested video so if you want some videos like this tailor made for you then by all means look at jumping in and becoming a Patron. The thing about this tank is a lot of people say it's one of the toughest Tier 8s to play but is that really true? Mm, it's debatable and we'll look into that. That's what the beastie looks like, uh, it's a beautiful tank. It's renowned as being one of the best tanks in World War II. Some would argue it was the very best. I don't actually agree with that. It was beset with lots of problems. But moving on, look in the overview. Damage HP is about 220. Rate of fire is you're going to get about 10 rounds a minute. Penetration 213. Its armor is 91. Speed is pretty good at 32 kilometers an hour. And rotation is above average. It's very good, in fact. Going on to the more detailed stats, you've got 1,450 hit points. You can see there that its main armor on the turret is pretty good, 150 mil at the front of the turret. Uh, it's got 100 mil on the hull as well at the front. The sides and the rear, however, are pretty paper thin. It's got a pretty decent view range at just shy of 300 meters. Camo profile is absolutely awful, as you can see. I mean, it's quite below average. Now I'm going to jump a little bit here. We're not going to look at the DPM because I want to look at. I want to go for each individual gun. As you can see here, its gun depression is eight degrees, which isn't bad for a medium, but it can be testing. And the elevation is 20. Top speed is 55 going forwards, 20 going backwards, which gives you an average of about 32. And the traverse speed is just shy of 42, with the hull traverse speed, how it turns around on its own axis, is shy of 60. Now I'm going to jump back to the individual guns. It comes with three guns. This is the 88cm 43L71. You can see here the aim time is just shy of three seconds. The dispersion is 0 0.312. Its DPM is 2,214 and has a reload time of six seconds. Penetration, your average pen on your AP is 213, APCR is 249 and HE is 48. Damage wise, you're going to be churning out an average of 220 AP, 190 APCR, 270 on your HE. And this is where the poor little Panther 2 starts to struggle in its tier. Penetration, it's average. DPM, it's one of the best. Damage, however, it's one of the worst. And that's just the problem with this tank. The irony is, this is the top gun. So you'd expect it to have slightly better damage, but unfortunately it doesn't. If we then swap this gun out and put the tier 7 gun in, which is still an 88, but this time it's the KWK 36L56, then you will see there that whilst your DPM goes up by 107 and the reload time also comes down, your penetration is pretty bad. In fact, it's one of the worst penetrations in tier but the damage stays the same. So to gather extra DPM, you sacrifice pen, which is really not worth it. Moving on to the tier eight stock gun, which is the 7.5 centimeter. Your pen goes up compared to the tier seven 88, but your damage goes down significantly, but your DPM does go up. So it's actually better to have that gun than it is to have the stock 88. Looking at the armor profile, well, as you can see, the front and the turret are pretty solid. It's a good side scraper, but when you stick it against an IS-3 with its big 122mm BL-9 gun, wow, you're pretty wide open. Yeah, the, the art of this one is try not to face off against anything because it will pen you. It is paper thin and the tank itself, in my personal opinion, I think is rather disappointing. And the reason I think it's disappointing is because this was allegedly one of the best tanks in World War II. Interestingly, the 75mm stock gun that we get in the game did have a lot better penetration than the Tiger 1's 88mm main armament. But the 88 did do more damage. So that is pretty accurate in the game. The problem is, is that this tank resides in tier eight and therein belies the issue of this tank. I think it's in the wrong tier. In real life, this tank would have faced Sherman Fireflies and IS-2s, 
which are both tiers below this tank. Interestingly, this tank never really got off the ground. It was an upgrade, in all real terms, of a Panther with Tiger II capabilities. With the Tiger II is a heavy tank, and this is a medium, so it had the same sort of components and capabilities as a Tiger II, but in a medium tank body, so to speak. This tank was eventually dropped, and it was going to be moved on a lot of the principles to make the E-50 which again didn't exist but the E-50 is a much better tank than this tank in the game. Interestingly the top gun in the Panther 2 is actually the gun for the Tiger 2 in real life, a gun that was never fitted to the, to the Panther 2. So if that's the case why don't they give it the medium gun that they have on the E-50, the tier 9 medium gun? It will give this tank a little bit more oomph. That's not to say the tank is poor. It's not. It just needs a little bit of TLC. Now this is me rolling out in it yesterday on New Bay. And I, I, I tried and tried yesterday to get a mastery in this tank. Uh, but unfortunately I just couldn't. I mean... The teams were just truly horrific. But I did get some decent gameplay to show you some of the strengths of this tank. And there are a lot of strengths. I mean, okay, you're not churning out shed loads of damage, but the reload is good. And if you put the tank in the right position and you protect that lower hull, boy, it is an effective tank. But like I say, you, you cannot be frontline in this. You, you can't really play it like a true, true heavy. -um. This really is more akin to a light medium tank. It has got a really, really good gun. I mean, this is going out with the top tier 8 88 millimeter gun. And as you can see, I'm giving these other tier 8s a really hard time because you can in this tank, but you've got to understand its positioning. You cannot be too far away from cover. Now, the 8 de degrees of gun depression in this tank, okay, it's not great, but it is just about enough. You can't go fully hauled down. You just don't get that gun depression but what you can do if you put yourself in a position like this where you've got something to back into you can use the strengths of the tank and the strengths are fast reload and mobility and this is what you've got to understand i mean your penetration's not that great i've just bounced the is8 there that's a tier 9 tank though and i'm going to give him a really hard time he's going to hurt me of course he is and i'm he's going to knock me for 430 and i'm only going to knock him for 200 odd but if you get the gun aiming in the right places, those weak spots, look at the reload on this. I mean, I was able to slaughter him because of the quick reload on the tank. So I've already done 2,500 odd damage. I've taken out two tanks. And now I'm going to give this M6 experimental a really hard time. I'm going to have to switch it to APCR, however, in order to pen. Because the penetration values, as I say, are just not that great. It is a nice tank, and I don't think it's the worst tank in tier 8, and I don't, and it's a tough tank to play, don't get me wrong, and it's tough to play because you've got to understand how to play it, and it's not for the faint-hearted, so we get a first class there, we do over 3,000 damage, we take three kills, and you know, I enjoyed that game. This is my good friend Soul and Machine of the clan tank. He's rolling out in his Panther 2 as part of my great gold giveaway that I did. Unfortunately, Soul in the Machine decided not to follow the rules and went out on Supremacy. More fool him! But as you can see, the 8 degrees of gun depression does actually help the tank. Soul in the Machine is quite able to sit here and use his gun depression and stay slightly hauled down and give this ISU 152 a hard time. This is what you need to learn how to do with this tank, guys. You, you can't frontline it. You've got to find those positions on the maps that the Panther 2 purrs. And this is one of those positions. The Panther 2 here is just purring. It loves being like this. Not too exposed. It's able to back into cover when and if necessary. And he's using that reload. Just pop it out above the top have a shoot 
um, a gate. Well, I don't know, he's popped behind the thing. And this is what you need to do with this tank. If you keep it in the open, you will get hurt. It's not that strong armor-wise. You, the penetration, as I say, isn't that great, so you've got to pick your shots carefully and wisely. If you don't, you're just going to see your shots bounce everywhere. And this is exactly what Soul in the Machine is doing. You know, there's no point in aiming for that turret at the moment because it's all bright red and he's not going to pen it. He's just going to bounce it, especially with his standard AP. He's able to sit here, he's able to cap the base, he's already done 1600 worth of damage, and now, you know, he's knocking out an average of 220 on his standard ammo this is how you should be looking to play the panther 2 stay away from the big guns stay in or near cover once you're ready with that big reload pop up have a shoot and get back into cover protect your armor at all costs because if you don't you're gonna get hurt and i love the way that soul in the machine is playing this game He's, he's in no rush, he's constantly firing because that reload is spectacularly good and he's just whittling down the enemy. A lot of people are saying, oh he's not done much and look, you know, you will bounce off the turret. It's very rare that you bounce off the hull but the turret you will get bounces and he's just bounced 560 in quick succession and he's still able to plow shots in and, and, you know, this is how the tank loves to be. It loves to be like this. And as I, he's bouncing 160 there. So he's now 720 bounced. I mean, that's really, really good going. All because he's got the tank in the right position. If he were to move further up, the chance are he's going to get penned. If, they've got, if they zoom in on him. He is going to get penned. It's just that straightforward. As I said... A lot of people turn around and say, oh, it's the hardest tank to play, it's the toughest tank to play, it's a pants tank, it's not very good. In part, I agree, it is, in my view, slightly out of its depth in Tier 8. It shouldn't be in Tier 8, really. Um, not when you consider some of the tanks around it. That's not to say that it truly doesn't belong there it's just been power creeped it's as straightforward as that with the introduction of all the premiums that's ah, a fantastic mastery 3422 kills held the ridge all the way i mean it's a great game uh next up this is a good friend of mine ottokar 14 from the clan risk rolling out in the panther 2 again on oasis palms eu server at this time in encounter the thing as i was trying to explain is with the introduction of so many tough premiums in tier 8 like the is3 defender etc etc the tank has been slightly power creeped and that's where it struggles uh it does truly belong in tier 8 but it's now outclassed outgunned and out armored uh, and this is the thing with the poor panther 2 and the panther suffers the same fate being in tier 7 you know, it, it's power creeped it should realistically sit probably in tier 6 especially when you consider that the panther itself was designed to take on the t-34 and the t-34-85 which sits in tier 6 was designed around the same time as the panther <laughs> yet the panther is a tier above and the the, the t-34-85 which is designed after the panther sits a tier below it makes no sense to me but it is what it is i guess Anyway, back to the game. Ottokar here, she's done 1300 damage, taken a kill, lost quite a lot of hit points because, as I said, the Panther 2 does struggle armor wise. But Ottokar 14 has been using the gun correctly and been using that reload and been using that mobility. And the gun is, is, is super accurate, by the way. I mean, it is a fantastic gun. I mean, it, like I said, it's no different to what you get on the Tiger 2. Okay, so it struggles with its penetration. And it doesn't dish out shed loads of damage. But, you know, it's quite a nice gun. And But this is where the Panther, as I said, really does struggle. Well, the Panther 2 struggles. It's got the stock Tiger 2 gun as its top gun. Now, as I said earlier, it didn't have this gun in real life. They, they thought about sticking it in, but it was it just never happened. That being the case, give it a tier 9 gun, guys, at least. Give it something with a bit more oomph. So at least you 
like you know it, it, it's more user friendly because at the moment it's not and unless you're a really good player you are going to struggle in this tank it's as simple as that and you're going to struggle in this tank because it's a proper medium with very very light armor and it's got a gun that will struggle to pen some of these big tier eights and nines okay so tier sevens when it comes across them is not too bad and as you can see here i mean ottokar 14 who's a very good player by the way is not really having too much of a problem penning these tanks but what are they going to do now i mean ottokar now has to wait for the vk to come up so they can pen the lower plate and this happens to be the problem with the panther 2. please wargaming change the bloody gun give it a you know, instead of giving it two tier eights, give it a tier nine as its top gun, at least. Give it a fighting chance. It's one of the best tanks ever made, allegedly. So give it, you know, give it some of that status, because at the moment it's just a damp squid. In certain respects, in certain hands. I mean, in some hands, this tank is highly effective. But when you consider that the average player base is below is around 48 percent win rate a lot of people do struggle in this thing and when they struggle in a tank they don't like the tank and they think the tank is pants panther 2 is not pants it's a good good medium tank but it's bloody tricky and it's like the british heavies you know they're, they're great tanks in the right hands if they're not in the right hands or they're in inexperienced hands then yeah they're really tricky tanks to play they're notoriously difficult just like the panther 2. i like the panther 2. i think it's a challenging tank um the only problem i've got with it is it's been paracreeped with all the premiums in tier 8. that's my view that and i'll stay with that view for a long time until somebody convinces me otherwise but the tank does have some good points to it, like I said. And you saw in the first game from me, you saw in Soul in the Sheen's game, and now you're seeing in Ottokar 14's game. Mobility and that rapid fire is the strengths of this tank. And if you can combine those and master those, know when to push, like Ottokar 14 has known when to push here, and use the mobility, you will have a lot of fun. And you will be successful in this tank. Do not frontline it. Don't do that. It's a second line support. And when you can play it like this, it's a brilliant tank. 4,321, a wow deserved mastery, four kills. I mean, that's just a great game. And I'd like to thank Ottokar14 of Risk and Soul in the Machine of Tank for kindly sharing their replays. That has been the Panther 2. As I said, this has been a patron requested video. Um, I hope it's useful. I hope that's been helpful for some of you i've been fugit by all means comment and everything below if you haven't pressed subscribe yet please do so it's a nice thing to do if you've got any decent replays send them to me fujitsblitz at gmail.com you can also follow me on facebook twitter and instagram and until the next time i'll say my usual thing stay safe out there have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking guys because that is what it's all about having fun and being happy